Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, Neurologist from Rajmandri, Andhra Pradesh, India. I am also the medical author of the book Focused Neurology. My email is 3klpm at gmail.com. Today we are going to talk about very interesting laws, Sherrington's laws and Herring's law. Uh, cranial nerves part 27, ocular motor nerves part 13. Uh, these two laws are very very interesting and very very important especially to understand the eye movements. But uh, we'll go one by one. What is Sherrington's law? Sherrington's law, it describes the balance between the contraction of the agonist and inhibition of the antagonist. So when agonist contracts, antagonist has to relax. For example, when I need to lift biceps, sorry, lead to lift the dumbbells, my biceps will contract but my triceps will relax. If both contract together, I cannot lift the dumbbells. So an agonist contract, antagonist have to relax. This is known as Sherrington's law of reciprocal innervation. When agonist contract, antagonist have to relax. If both contract together, it becomes pathological except for few physiological conditions like standing and shivering. So co-contraction of agonist and antagonist is abnormal except for few physiological conditions and it is known as dystonia, co-contraction of agonist and antagonist. So Sherrington's law describes the balance between the contraction of agonist and inhibition of the antagonist. When we take eye, eye movements, during a monocular duction movements, the agonist example medial rectus contracts and the antagonist example lateral rectus relaxes therefore this law is very much useful when we try to understand the eye movements for example when i need to look to the right side the lateral rectus contracts but the medial rectus has to get inhibited otherwise if both contract together i cannot move my eye to the right side to the lateral uh, ab duction i cannot do that so when the agonist contacts, antagonist has to relax. So during a monocular duction movement, when the agonist medial rectus contracts, the antagonist lateral rectus relaxes. In certain conditions, example Juvenz syndrome and Perinot syndrome, there is a failure of antagonist inhibition resulting in co-contraction of muscles. So co-contraction causes the globe to retract into the orbit rather than moving in a normal manner. Example in Perinot syndrome, it's a supranuclear eye movement disorder. So both the superior rectus and the inferior rectus contract together. So the eyes goes, eye retracts. So this is co-contraction of agonist and antagonist. Obviously, it is not normal. So Sherrington's law says that or describes the balance between the contract of the agonist and inhibition of the antagonist. When agonist contracts, antagonist has to relax. This is, so this is Sherrington's law. Now we are going to talk about another interesting law known as Herring's law. Herring's law or the law of equal innervation states that the same amount of innervation goes to an extraocular muscle and to its yoke fellow. What is the what are the yoke muscles? For example, right lateral rectus and left medial rectus move the eye towards the right. So these are the yoke muscles. Or left lateral rectus and right medial rectus they move the eyes towards the left side. These are the yoke muscles. So according to the Herring's law. Herring's law of equal and dual innervation, it states that the same amount of innervation goes to an extraocular muscle and to its yoke fellow. During binocular version movements, the extraocular muscles work as yoke pairs. The lateral rectus in one eye contracts with the medial rectus in the other eye. The amount of innervation to the yoke pair is always determined by the fixating eye. The Herring's law is important in understanding the topic of primary and secondary deviations. It is also uh, it is it is also important in understanding the abducting nystagmus in MLF lesions. The medial longitudinal fasciculus helps in abduction. So, in diseases like multiple sclerosis, when MLF medial longitudinal fasciculus gets affected the adduction gets affected. But as I said, the adduction of the one eye, that is the medial rectus and lateral rectus of the other eye are yoke muscles. So in, in, in lesions of MLF, when adduction gets affected, 
the same innervation goes to the adductor of one muscle and the abductor of the other muscles so when ad duction gets affected extra impulses goes to the its yoke fellow that is the lateral rectus and the eye moves mightily to the other side so we get a abducting nystagmus so we can get abducting nystagmus nystagmus in ab duction abducting nystagmus in mlf lesions the classic example is multiple sclerosis what we call as ino internuclear ophthalmoplegia so nystagmus only pertain to one eye abducting nystagmus we see this in mlf lesions in multiple sclerosis internuclear ophthalmoplegia it is because of herring's law of dual and equal innervation the medial rectus and the lateral rectus of the other eye gets equal innervation equal and dual innervation so when the one eye is affected the other eye tries to compensate by moving mightily and therefore we get abducting nystagmus so if we, if we know this sherrington's law and herring's law most of the eye movements can be easily understood uh, especially in understanding the topics of primary and secondary deviation these laws are very useful yeah so i hope you have enjoyed listening to these wonderful laws sherrington's law of reciprocal innervation and herring's law of equal and dual innervation the other important concepts of neurology i put in a book focus neurology written by me dr s srinivas uh, it is available online from all leading booksellers including amazon if interested it could be bought online if you have really enjoyed listening to my video uh, please share the link to your friends like the video and subscribe my youtube channel dr sinwas medical concepts and my webpage dr sinwas concepts thank you bye